Good afternoon crafters and welcome to today's masterclass. I'm Michelle Brown, creative director from Picture to Page of Beyond Paper Craft Shows, which is our scrapbooking, mixed media art and paper crafts community. And today we're talking all about gesso. What is it? Do I need it? And how do I use it? Now I can see you all here on Facebook Live, so if you've got any comments, please leave a message. And of course, if you're watching us on a replay in Facebook or YouTube, please make sure you leave some comments and any questions and we will do our best to answer them as well. Now, why a masterclass on gesso? Because it's one of those tools that when you're just starting out in mixed media art, it may be something that you haven't really played with before. And it can be a little bit of an investment. So it seems a little bit daunting, a bit overwhelming. It's one of those products that seems very much stuck in the crafting realm rather than in the craft realm. So we're gonna try and break down some of those barriers today. Excellent, hi Lorraine, good to see you there. Okay, so firstly, what is gesso? Now, here is one of the ones that we'll be using today. This is a Montmartre one. We pronounce it gesso. Could also pronounce gesso, but I think we'll stick with gesso. So gesso is, it's a primer. So usually it's white and it has a binder in it that might be chalk, gypsum, or pigment. And what it does is add tooth and really prepares your background for, for um, your surface, getting ready to paint. So there's very many different types of gesso and there's different opacancies and different thicknesses and we'll show you a few of the differences today with the ones that I have on hand. Now of course what it does is provide you a consistent background, a consistent substrate. So originally when canvas was used a lot, it was used as a primer because you have that very rough surface, it could absorb the paint or the paint might sit on top for oil painting and the gesso gives you a chance to case that consistent surface. Now the good thing in modern day times is that it then means that our art journals, our cardstock or whatever we're using, it gives us that consistent foundation. So it gives us a place to start. So most often gesso will be white, but these days you can also get it in black. You can also get um, clear gesso. And in my research today, I found out there's also spray gesso, though I'm not sure why you'd want to use that because me and sprays just do not mix. So it's just basically a white primer that gives us a little bit of extra tooth and it gives us that consistent background. Now, if you're preparing a canvas and you didn't want those little ridges in your painting, you can put down a few layers, sand it and apply it until you've got a really smooth surface. But like I said, these days when we're doing more art journaling, it just gives us that consistency. And also when we buy canvases, a lot of them are pre-primed, so you don't really need to add gesso. So that is what gesso is. Do you need it? Look, if you're doing art journaling or if you're doing a lot of canvases, painting on wood or chipboard, I suggest that you certainly do. If you're a card maker and you're just getting started out, probably not. If you're doing stamping, if you're doing coloring, you've got your special boards or your blending cards for using that. So you don't really need gesso for that. If you're doing scrapbooking, again, it depends sort of where you are on the scale. If you're doing more of the mixed media and adding acrylic paint, then I think you definitely do need gesso. So we'll talk today a little bit about how we can use it as well. So I've got some examples, a few that we can have a play with, and then show you a couple of little techniques as well, because I know one of them was a bit of a surprise when we did get to know your paints a week or so ago. So I'll show you that technique as well. So let's hop over to the demonstration camera and we'll get started. Okay, so these are the three brands of gesso that I have. So we've got um, Montmartre one gesso, and this is the one that we've got in stock at Mixed Media Art. I've got a Liquitex one, and I've got a Devian one as well that I think I bought quite a while ago. So the other things I've got to play with today are a whole heap of paintbrushes. I've got a palette knife, because that's a great way of adding gesso, as well as an old credit card or store-bought card. Um, some acrylic paints. I've got a stencil as well, a darkroom door stencil, and we'll have a bit of a play with these. Hopefully I won't make too much mess. And like I said, if you've got any questions, just let me know. Okay, so I can see Tracy, I can see Sue, I can see Ruth. So fantastic to have you all here today. Okay, so let's clear this off. So I'm using my um, Dilutions Art Journal. Thump, thump, thump. Um, the large one, so that's what, eight by 10. I've also, just because I'm at the start of it, I've popped another art journal in there just to give me a more of a, more of a flat surface. 
So similar to what we did with Get to Know Our Paints, I've stuck down an old dictionary page here, and this will just help us see how translucent each of the gessos are as well. Now I'm just using these older brushes with gesso. Again, it's all acrylic and it washes out, so I'm not sure if it matters, but I just prefer to use separate brushes with gesso than with my paints, just so we don't get any, um, any muddle up. So firstly, I'll apply the Liquitex one. Now this is a couple of years old. The reason that I had this one was because I went to America to do an art class and my darling husband let me go to Dick Blix and buy what I needed. So I got some of that gesso there along with the Liquitex paint. So you can see that this is quite runny and you can see there that it's a little bit translucent. Now the thing with gesso is it really becomes more translucent as it dries. Okay, so there's our first one. So we'll make a note of this one. This is the Liquitex. Okay, and then we'll use the Devian one. So again, very similar. Using a dry brush. It's a little bit on. So this one's quite a bit um, thicker than the Liquitex one. And I can see, hopefully you can see as well, it's quite a bit thicker, so it's not quite as translucent. Hi, Lee. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks, Pronny. Okay, so this is the Devian one. And then finally, my favourite is the Montmartre one. Again, like with anything, get to have a play with them, understand it. So this is sort of a consistency in between the other two. And when you get to know your gesso, it really helps to um, use some of these other techniques that we'll talk about today. So that is the Montmartre one. I find that sort of a good in-between. It's not too thick, so we're not quite using it as like an impasto medium to add any texture. But again, what we can do while that's drying is then use the back of our brush to put some texture into it as well. So creating that so that we can you know, put a little bit of texture into the background of our mixed media because as we know, adding layers is what it's all about. Okay, so there are our three gessos that I have here to play with today. And like I said, nearly every range of paint has a range of gesso as well. So you can see there the Liquitex one, you can see the Divian one and the Montmartre one. It is interesting, you can see as they're drying, so this one's become a little bit more yellow from what I can see. And this one's just that, yeah, a little bit thicker as well. Okay, so ways of applying gesso. We can, of course, use a trusty old paintbrush. That's nice, but again, it does leave lines in it. Not sure if the light will catch that. But another way of getting rid of those lines, just adding a tiny bit of water, which I've got well off screen so I don't make a mess. And you can just actually smooth those lines out. So if you like sort of finger painting and you didn't want those lines, you could do that. Or like I said before, if you're looking for something a bit thicker, you could certainly go and um, sand that and apply another layer as well. Okay, another way, like we said, is using a palette knife. So again, this is really getting into that the art realm of arts and crafts, isn't it? But again, just using the palette knife just gives you oops, a really nice texture. And sometimes it's really good if you just want to be quick and you don't want as much mess. So just applying it like that and then depending on how sort of a consistent a background you want so it gives you just quite a different finish to the paintbrush and again similar to the store-bought card well, if you're using a smaller one it wouldn't quite fit but using that to then drag it down and this is just a really fun way to add paint because again we're doing mixed media so we're not trying to get a solid a solid covering we're just trying to get some down to give us that interesting techniques okay so that's the first thing we can do with it we can just use it to create a background using a paintbrush using a palette knife or using the credit card now another thing we can do is apply it through a stencil so here is a very well painted darkroom door stencil and we've got these in the mixed media art store so what we can do just pop it down here now, whether we use the paintbrush or the credit card, it's just come and smear. Again, depending on what sort of effect you're looking for, we might actually be better using the paintbrush. And again, just a really dry brush, 
getting that gesso in through the stencil gives ourselves a really interesting background texture. We lift that up carefully. Now, can you see that? I said this is quite a cream paper, so you can just see there. Let me show you without putting the gesso. <laughs> I've already got gesso on the floor this month. We don't need to do it again. Now, the other thing, as we've talked about before, is I hate wasting anything. So there's that little bit of gesso there, and there's a little bit on my paintbrush. So what I would do is grab another art journal, not this one, because we don't want to get it wet. Well, here I've got some, um, some deli paper. So any scrap paper that you could use for creating, you know, we saw um, Neve the other day creating background papers, the same thing, bit of deli paper, and then just using it to smush all of that off. And then keep going until we really got all of it out. Now we can see here it's actually slightly activating the paint that's here too and coming out slightly pink. So you can get all sorts of interesting effects. Um, another way of doing something similar is using a baby wipe. Now these are a little bit wet, but why we're cleaning this is actually to push the gesso out through onto the background as well. Okay, so you can see there that even the baby wipes reactivated the paint that's on there, but when we pull it off, we can see, because it's added actually a little bit of a pink tint, oops, there you go, we've got the start of a nice little tissue or um, deli paper to use for something else. Actually, Diana says she loves using her, excellent, loves using gesso with a credit card. Yeah, that's one of my favourite ones as well. We've even got the comments the right colour. Um, make sure it's not a current credit card, just in case. Okay, so we've talked about what gesso is and how we apply it these different ways. Now the couple of techniques I wanted to show you, I've got some gesso on this side that's already dry because we need to make sure that it is fully dry. Um, quite often if you're doing art journaling, you'd want to put the gesso down the night before. I think Michelle Ward always suggested that the last thing you do at night is apply a layer of gesso. And of course our favourite friend Dina Wakely always talks about gesso being like the underwear for your art journal. So always having it down there. So here we've got a coat of straight gesso here and here that I've applied with a brush and here I've got it through that same stencil. So again, it's a little bit harder to see but you can just see it because of the, the colouring there. So what we're going to do now is grab some acrylic paint and do something similar to what Neve was doing on Saturday. So applying a little bit of paint. So this is the Dina Wakely Blackberry which is a cool little purple. Now we've got enough room under the camera, excellent. So spreading that out and you can see that's actually quite a light colour. If I put some onto the bit without gesso, it sort of shows you that colour as well. So again, this is why doing the swatches on different surfaces is really important because it gives us an understanding of, of what, of how our colours behave on the different medium. So putting gesso under is the same as putting your ephemera under. It gives you quite a different surface. Now I'm just going to blend a second colour in there. And look, when I go this way, you can actually see not sure if you can see it there, the brush marks of the gesso underneath. You can just see it there. So again, that mightn't be a problem, but if it is, you can always sand it off or use something to smooth it out a little bit. Again, really depending on what you want. Now, everyone hold your breath. This technique can be a little bit hit and miss when I do it. I'm not sure how much we're supposed to let this dry, but so we've got dry gesso. We've got the acrylic paint on top. Now I'm going to put my stencil on top. And very similar to those of you that watch um, Lisa Oxley with Scrap Witch, she then will come with the baby wipe and take the paint off through the stencil. So that baby wipe is quite damp as well. And so then we lift it off and it gives us that really interesting technique. So dry gesso down, using acrylic paint and then using the stencil and a baby wipe to pull that paint up off it. Now again, that's probably got some paint on it, so careful where I put that. So that gives us a really interesting effect as well when we're laying it up. And if you watched our video on Saturday with Neve, she then could do different colours in different, different locations and give us quite a detailed pattern, which of course is really interesting. So that's one way of doing it, just a blank layer of gesso, acrylic paint, using the stencil to pull it off. Another way, so here, again you can just see I've already put the gesso through the stencil just like I did on this side but this side is already dry and what we can then do is use our acrylic paint again 
So just add a little bit of paint. Now you can always use your paint palette, but you know. And what we find is that then like magic will come up through it. Now that's coming up with both colors because I've got a dirty brush, but that's okay. These two colors work well together because they're analogous. So if you are really shy with colors and look, I'm definitely not the bravest as anyone will test to, I'm usually using green. Um, is just, yeah, stick to your warm colors or your cool colors and then you won't go too wrong. So we can see there, you can see that gesso pattern coming through. So it gives us another way of creating a layer in a way a little bit more subtle than this. So this one's actually quite bright, even though we've tinted the gesso underneath it. But what we could also do as it dries a little bit, again with that same baby wipe, moving it around so we don't reply back on, is just buff it up that little bit and help take the paint off the gesso. So again, depending what sort of effect we're going for, that then gives us the chance to give us a different look again. So let me do that across the scene. We've got to be careful we don't contaminate it. So there you can see that really makes the gesso pop. So it's actually really interesting to see all that together. I have put the lid back on that. So we've got the plain gesso with the stencil, with the paint and the stencil taken off. We've then got the paint over the gesso, removed some with a baby wipe. And then we've got the other one there where we've just left it as well. So that creates quite a few different looks with the gesso. So that's what I love about it. It's not just providing an undercoat. It's not just providing, you know, that, that translucency, but it also gives you a few really cool techniques for adding layers in your mixed media art. And, you know, one of the things that I'm sure many of you have realised as you're adding layers is that if you want to have lots of layers, I'll just use that paint wonder if this one's dry. Looks pretty dry. And just stick that over here. As I said, hate wasting paint. We wouldn't want to waste paint. So I've still got a little bit left in there. Um, yeah, so the best way to get layers into your mixed media art is that you need to put them in there. So what you do need to consider is what goes into your background, what goes into your middle ground or your focal image, and then what comes out on top as well. There we go. We hate to waste any paint and now we can add a tiny bit of water to it and then if I'm really careful and haven't made a complete mess of things yeah that might be a bit water resistant onto that deli paper yep that's just made a puddle not to worry again so you can see there we've got the gesso that we added through the stencil we've got the very dry brushing with a little bit of paint and then we've got the globby water mess that I've now created Again, it's a great thing about mixed media. We're only there using it as a background. We can sponge it up a little bit, take some of the color off it. And there we go. Okay, so there was a couple more things I wanted to show you. So we've talked about how do we use gesso. We can use it as a base coat. We can use it as a resist technique. Now what, I've, what you can see here is because it is somewhat translucent, what you can also do is use it to knock back the color. Now let me move this. So here is one I prepared earlier and even marked the page so I can find it again for you, which is always handy. So here is a background that I've created, you know, it's all a bit of a hodgepodge of colour. So I've done this with different acrylic paints just like that, had a little bit left over, added it into the background. And then what I've done is a sketch up here. And you can see here what I've done to knock that colour back and help that sketch sit up, which really does show on the camera, is by using just that little bit of gesso through here. So doing the sketch first with a pen, with a gel pen, then using the gesso to take that colour back. So you can still see the colour that's underneath it, but it's not as bright and in your face and it helps your character set up. So when you're looking at your composition of your mixed media, you want to consider how to get your focal points to sit up. And sometimes that's by adding some gesso so it can sit on top and sit forward. But other times it's just by knocking back or taking that background back as well. So you haven't lost all the beautiful colours and texture in there. It's just a lot more muted. And again, that's a great way of turning those backgrounds um, into something that helps you with that focal point. Um, here is another one that I have prepared earlier in my Scrap FX Junk Journal. Again, these are available in the Mixed Media Art Studio website. Um, so this one, you can see here I've got some stamped figures. Now this background, again, was done when we did the, um, the swatches. 
And this was what it looks like on the other side, being a I painted these before we bound the journal, so that's why it's sitting there. You can see all the bright colours, a bit of the Scrap FX rice paper underneath with the gel medium. But what I've done here is stamped it with some Dina Wakely stamps. I've done the middle one and then created a mask to put the two on. We'll have to do a masterclass in stamping soon, won't we? And then, again, it was really looking flat and it was hard to see the figures. So using that gesso, because I know it's translucency, is to then sit it there and to help knock it back and then putting just a little bit of the scribble sticks here to bring the figures forward. Will that focus on that? So that really helps focus the figures, again, without losing that beautiful background. And again, that could have a lot more stenciling on it, that could have a lot more um, doodling on it to really finish that off. Okay, so do we have any other questions? Okay, Duncan said, Oh, Wendy Duncan said a heat gun on the paper. Um, again, it depends which train of thought you are. There is a train of thought sort of from Dina Wakely that you wouldn't use a heat gun on acrylic paint because it is plastic and you should let it dry. But yeah, if we were in a hurry, you could certainly blast it with a heat gun. Again, just be a little bit careful with the deli paper because it might kind of catch on fire if you've got one of those really scary kick-ass um, heat guns. Use your words, Michelle. Okay, so there's our three little gessos. Now, is there any other questions? Excellent. Ruth says, yeah, the kick back the colour. It makes a really big difference, doesn't it, to be able to bring that colour up and then push it back and not losing your backgrounds but still being able to see through them as well. Excellent. Thanks, Carmel. They are really clever techniques, aren't they? And again, these are things that I've been doing and playing with over quite a few years. And you get to the point where you do kind of do them without thinking, but it's good to be able to revisit them. I wonder if I can get both back on the screen. Without knocking over the water or putting the paintbrush into my drinking water because, you know, we all know how that goes. Excellent. So I don't think we had any other questions. So we've really talked about what gesso is today, being a paint with some binder in it that gives us a background and gives us a really consistent substrate. So it comes in white, but you can now also get black and clear. It, do you need it? If you're venturing into mixed media art, I definitely think it's a purchase that you'd want, perhaps not your very first thing, but once you start getting into it and want to do more serious layers, the gesso really does help to seal the pages and then give you that consistent background and let you use these fun techniques as well. If you're doing card making, probably not so much because you're doing stamping, you're buying that fantastic blender card so you don't need to create that same level of background. But again, no reason why you can't use your mixed media techniques in your card making. And then again with scrapbooking as well, if you're moving more towards the mixed media end of scrapbooking, then definitely look at getting it and using some of these techniques to create that splash of, that splash of colour and that background as well. Excellent. Hi, Ashley. It's good to see you there. Hi, Maria. So if there are any more questions, please make sure you pop them down in the comments. We'll definitely be checking them. Um, of course, make sure you give us a like and share us with your crafty friends. If you want to know what else is going on at From Picture to Page, head over to our website, from picture to page and beyond.com.au. If you're looking for any of this stuff, head over to the Mixed Media Art Studio store, which is at mixedmediaart.net. And that's probably where this video will end up as well. Okay, so Carmel said, bought the Montmartre Clear Gesso. Yes, I've heard the clear, very good things with the Clear Gesso, so I'm looking forward to playing with that one day as well. Excellent. So, if that's all, thank you so much for joining us today, and this is Michelle Brown signing off. We hope you have a crafty day.